We're good. Okay. So, this is supposed to be a fresh marker. Um, oh, okay. That's perfect. I have one that I just used for the first time a little bit ago. Oh, okay. Well, this is also totally first time use, so oh, okay. maybe it's easy to be broken in. Okay. Um, I was semi starting without you, but I've hardly done anything. Uh, so, um, okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So, um, and actually, yeah, there was a little something I, I messed up last class, so I can get that uh, cleared up real quick. Uh, now, so Lagrange algorithm for solving AX equals B in the case where A is symmetric. Positive definite. Um, okay. Um, so we have. Um, I have this in front of me so I can refer to it later. Um, all right, so we start out with our solution initially being zero. Um, and we're going to generate a sequence of orthonormal vectors, these QKs, but we really start with Q1, uh, so Q0. So keep in mind, wherever I have K here, at this point, K is equal to 0. So Q0 is 0, Q1 will be the first uh, actual vector in the sequence. So as long as we are not converged, um, Okay, so we have generate our recursion coefficients, our betas. Okay, now we really have two sequences of vectors going, the Q's and the R's. Um, now, so RK effectively is B minus A XK. So these are the unnormalized residuals. And they are constructed in such a way as to be orthogonal. Uh, but they're not unit vectors, so we're going to be orthogonal. Uh, what I can also say is, um, okay, this is for k equals um, 0, 1, 2, and so on. They, they're indexed um, starting at 0. And the first residual is just going to be equal. Uh, it's just going to be equal to b. Okay. Um, and then um, uh, okay, now the next step, qk plus one, is rk over beta k. So the qks where k starts from one. Are these are the normalized residuals? Uh, so those are orthonormal. So dot products with different ones are zero. Dot product with itself is one. Okay. Um, so then we bump k up to the next iteration, um, and we compute our recursion coefficients. Our um, Alphas, which is QK transpose AQK. Um, now, there's one thing um, I mentioned last time that was wrong. Uh, beta K squared, I had given as the dot product of I don't know, uh, polynomials PK, PK. That is wrong, um, because it's actually, beta k squared is the dot product of the unnormalized orthogonal polynomials with themselves. The pk's are actually normalized. So if there's a formula in the notes for beta k squared, that formula is correct. Okay. Uh, so that's the only mistake I made last time. And that's what I get for improvising. Um, okay. So. So our next unnormalized residual 
is a minus alpha k i q k minus beta k minus one q k minus one. And this is why I say q zero is zero. So that way, even when k is equal to one, this is still valid. Um, so we would just not have a term. But the term we have here is <coughs> zero. And then I have our latest solution is beta naught, which is just the norm of the two norm of B. QK TK inverse E1. So if this vector here I put in parentheses, we're solving a system um, because of the matrix TK, I mentioned this last time, just to review, that is a matrix that has these coefficients that we're computing, the alphas and the betas, fill this matrix. So TK is K by K. It is symmetric, it is tridiagonal, and it is also positive definite. So what happens is, to solve AX equals B, where A can be a large matrix, we're actually solving at each step a small system. It starts out just being one by one and just keeps growing. But the idea is hopefully, after not too many iterations, we will have converged to a reasonably accurate uh, solution. Okay, um, now at the end of last time, after giving this algorithm, I gave the, so, so this is the, the Lanchos algorithm for AX equals B, which is actually a foundation for several iterative methods, which I'll cover um, starting next week. Um, but the one drawback here is this is not of a form that we expect for a non-stationary iterative method. We want something like this. xk plus 1 should have a simple relationship with xk, where we just are adding on some multiple of a search direction, this uh, pk here. So we want to modify this method, this Lanchos algorithm, to give us something like this. So that way, because what happens is these iterations, <coughs> Solving a system is only going to get more and more expensive as the iteration progresses. So we'd like to try to eliminate that cost. Um, because if, if we can just do something like this, then the main cost of this iteration, the most expensive thing, is a matrix vector multiplication, A times QK. So, um, so, we, so that's, that's the dominant cost, but, we, but this is going to get out of hand if we need a lot of iterations. So if we can just eliminate that, then um, even though the iterates will be the same, these xk's will be the same, but we're computing them faster. So that's really the point of today, <coughs> is to evolve from this to the actual conjugate gradient method. Okay. Um, So, um, so in order to make a computation of each new solution, more efficient, um, okay. um, we use a factorization that I briefly discussed some time ago when we were talking about symmetric positive definite matrices. Because when you have a symmetric positive definite matrix, what's the typical factorization to use to uh, solve systems of those kind of matrices? Cholesky. Cholesky. But today we're going to use the other one. What's the other one? L U factors? No. We could use L -L -T. LDLT, which is There's almost square equivalent to L U. Square root free Cholesky. Uh, so you use the L D LT, uh, as that's what it's called, that's what we say, but it's LDL transpose factorization. So yeah, square root free Cholesky. So, because TK is symmetric positive definite, so it does have 
just kind of factorization. So TK, I'll write it as LK, DK, LK transpose, where LK is a unit lower triangular matrix, and it has a, so all ones in the diagonal. Um, and then DK is a diagonal matrix, um, and each diagonal entry is positive. Um, you could think of this, if I lump this together as UK, then it's like taking an LU factorization and just separating the diagonal part. All right. Um, and so that, okay, so some notation is, uh, because TK is tridiagonal. Now, if we recall banded matrices and Gaussian elimination, um, because this is tridiagonal, so it has an upper and lower bandwidth of one, what does that say about um, L, the LK? What's nice about Gaussian elimination or LU factorization of banded matrices? Um, that, well, it's going to be cheaper depending on what your band is. Uh, well, yeah, so, so the fact that TK is banded, what does it, so, so what does that say about bandedness of like L or? L. Well, it's uh, they are also banded by yes. the same. The same. Yes, <laughs> the, the, the bandedness is preserved. <laughs> so that means that LK has a lower bandwidth of one. So not only is it unit lower triangular, it is also bidiagonal, like lower bidiagonal. So, I, so I'm going to um, refer to these entries, L1, L2, down to L, the little L, K minus 1. So those are the subdiagonal entries. Everything else is 0. And then for uh, DK, capital DK, we'll refer to those diagonal entries, D1, the little D1, little D2, down to little DK, it's diagonal, so everything else there is zero. Okay. Um, so we so we can exploit this fact that TK is tridiagonal to get this. Okay, so these matrices will be relatively easy to work with because there's hardly anything here that's non-zero. Okay. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to recall some notation from last time. Each solution that I compute, xk, has this form, qk, uh, which contains my little q's from Langell's algorithm, times yk, which is a vector that takes linear combination of those uh, columns. Um, so I'm going to define a matrix pk tilde, so pk tilde times LK transpose is equal to QK. So QK and LK are known. So, so basically, I'm defining PK tilde so, it's, so that it satisfies this relationship. So in other words, if you want to be really rigorous about the definition, PK <coughs> tilde is defined to be um, QK LK inverse transpose. So we're, we're saying the same thing. Okay, now the reason why I'm doing that is I'm going to substitute this in here. Um, so now it gets xk equals pk tilde lk inverse transpose. Now yk, we have a formula for yk. And that I introduced last time. So yk is tk inverse e1. Um, so I can fill that in here. All right, so this is qk, and this is yk. But I can use the LD, LT factorization of tk. So I have pk tilde. LK inverse transpose, and then TK is LK DK LK transpose inverse E1. 
Now, when we take the inverse of a product, that is the what? <laughs> The inverse of a product is the product of the inverse of the inverse order. Inverse order, <laughs> yes. So, um, let's fill that in. LK inverse transpose. So now going from right to left, I'll have LK... Um, oh, hold on. That should not be there. Okay, um, okay so I have LK... Inverse transpose dk inverse lk inverse e1. These guys cancel. Um, so now I'm going to take everything else here. So I'll leave pk tilde the way it is. And then everything else I'm going to call wk. So now I have a, I've gone from one linear combination to another. So first I express xk as this linear combination of the cubes from the Langell's algorithm. Now I'm expressing it as a linear combination of the columns of this matrix, this p tilde, which I haven't told you anything about yet, but it's going to become very helpful to us. Um, now, it seems like I've not accomplished anything, but it turns out that I have because uh, well, you'll see momentarily. Um, uh, it, it has to do with this relationship um, between um, the columns of P tilde and the columns of Q. Um, now, this vector WK, so, so the way to find that. everything that's down here. Now, what I want to know is, how does each, I compute this every iteration, how does each WK depend on the previous W? So do, how does WK relate to WK minus 1? Um, so let's take a look at that. <coughs> 